Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Talks with Tina. We are pursuing our most true and authentic self by what? <laughs> Uncovering our roots. Listen, it has been a long time since I sat before you guys um, and actually did like a, a real Talks with Tina. So expect this to be a long one because we have a lot to unpack. It's been a very interesting season um, for me, and I kind of like talked about it a little in my story, but I'm going to bring my story to here. So we, you know, what better way than to sit on the couch and talk about life, okay? Um, we did a cozy talk with Tina because my office is a little cluttered from celebrating my mom's 50th birthday. Woo, that's coming up, but we did it a little bit early. Um, and that just, like, I think we can really tie everything in together. And so I will title this video, Healing is Hard. <laughs> Okay. Um, and I was kind of talking about this a little bit, like I said, a little bit in my story yesterday, but um, I want to bring my story to the forefront because I haven't talked to you guys. Okay. So long story long, let me catch y'all up. Um, let's see. We had second conference, which was in February and that one was gathering the generations. And that was really amazing. Then I had a summer, right? I'm trying to catch y'all up on life. Then I had a summer with my nephews and I kind of, I went for a very prolonged sabbatical. I came back maybe once during that time, a little bit after conference, dropped the video, boom, da, boom, da, boom. that was good. Then here we are now. I've gone to the Woman Evolve conference and that was healing and it kind of brought me to this place that I am now. But um, as I'm planning my third conference, the title is becoming so evident to me. And this conference is called Hurt Not Hidden preserve for such a time as this and it is happening february 7th through the 8th in high point north carolina shameless plug if you haven't registered be sure to register it is free this year so uh tell your friends to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend all right let's try to zoom in because we're already two minutes into the chat um so hurt not hidden preserve for such a time as this really came from the revelation that i had from the lord that is pretty much on the basis of there's certain every situation, every trial, every circumstance that we face in life. Um, it does something, right? That's how we, you know, grow up and there's things that trigger us and harm us and all these other things. Um, and so the hurt not hidden, I believe that it is a tactic of the enemy literally to silence you in the places where you've been hurt. And I feel like it has to be reiterated over and over again. No, some of these things were not God's plan. It wasn't God's intention for your life. It is not the things that the Lord orchestrated for you to have to go through um, because I think we need that validation to understand that God is not in the operation of hurting you, right? God is not going to just say, mm, I feel like they need to be touched on. I feel like they, let me go introduce a predator to their life. No, I believe that is a tactic of the enemy so that you won't see the purpose that God has had for you since the beginning of time, since he formed you in your mother's womb. So that is the premise of conference is that, yes, you may experience some hurt. You may have experienced some very traumatic things, but those things were not to like hide you. You don't have to hide behind those things. They don't have to make you that truly if you tell this story and you grow through it and you heal through it, um, you are able to help others. So you're preserved for such a time as this. That time period in your life was marked so that you can help anyone who is experiencing the type of pain and the type of hurt that you're experiencing. If you stay hidden, there's no way that we would know how to overcome. If you stay hidden, who would hear your story? If you stay hidden, who will understand the magnitude of God, how God can heal you, how God can deliver you, how God can save you, and the magnitude in which he can do it. And so... I feel like this conference is going to be so healing. I feel like there's going to be a lot of deliverance from the things that we truly hide from and the things that we quite really haven't dealt with. Um, and I just believe the Lord is going to do a mighty work in that. So that's the shameless plug on conference. But as I'm planning conference, going through it, living through it, Hurt Not Hidden has expanded so much. And I think I just thought of it more in the context of people going through things like, oh yes, hurt, not hit it. You know, you're preserved for such a time as this. Like God will do amazing things. But I have experienced so many back-to-back -back pain points that I'm just like, whoa, God, <laughs> whoa, whoa, but like, I wasn't expecting all of this. And my heart has been pricked in such a way that um, it had the 
it almost had the ability to kind of to silence me like and it wasn't anything traumatic I feel like I'm I'm really dramatic about a lot of things but I always say my pain is not your pain and so we can't you know try to find a common ground with that something that might be very hurtful for you may not face me one bit and something that may not face you one bit may be very hurtful for me so I feel like I've stressed this time and time again that um friendships are like my weak point and to the friends who watch this I might be talking about you <laughs> I might be talking about you but um I always say that that is a weak point for me because it is something that I desire and so obviously it's going to be an area that I get attacked in the most because it's a desire of mine. I believe the Lord will definitely bring a tribe and a village around. And he has like, I, that's not something that I lack per se, but, um, connections that won't sting. I think, you know, in my expectation of life and my expectation of what friendships and relationships and former relationships should be that, you know, it's all fine and dandy. <laughs> like there would be no problems. There would be no mishaps. And if we find healthy communication styles and all this other stuff, that everything will be a jolly good time. And as I grow older and as I mature and as I learn how to navigate being a better friend, I realize certain things don't work like that. And I feel like we want things to be bad, so bad, <laughs> that we go and self-sabotage, we go in, we go make a mess and da-da-da-da. And certain things don't have to be like that. So my aspect is friendships, but I know there are certain people who go through certain things like there might be family issues there might be work issues all of the above but I think if you don't navigate that space properly if you don't understand what triggers you and not just say oh I'm triggered I feel like I say this every video don't be like oh I'm triggered and then just leave it at that why are you triggered what is your response to that trigger is it a healthy response is it a uh shoot everybody in the face type <laughs> type response can I say that probably not um or is it just a, oh, I'm blocking you out. I don't want to deal with you. I don't like you no more. Did it, like, how do you respond to these triggers? And so I will walk you guys to a certain period in time that I just dealt with recently. And the Lord really just had to show me, like, you have to reframe your response to this. This is how I've healed you. This is how you should respond better, right? And so, um, shoo. The one thing I love about talks with you know, we just, we just get to the nitty gritty here. Um, we just get to the nitty gritty. So, um, I was dealing with a friend group, right? Okay. So y'all, I'm, I don't like, I like, I like telling my business, but I don't like telling my business like that. Anyway, but here we are. That's about being transparent and vulnerable and stuff. Wow. Um, a certain friend group of mine and I've just realized that. Phew, all right, this make me nervous. I just realized that, you know, some connections are shallow and some are deep. And for me, I always go to the deep end with my friendships. I'm always like, mm, love you, boom, deep end. And for some people, I like, like you, <laughs> shallow end, <laughs> shallow end. And so when it finally clicked to me that I've been way out in the deep, the people been out on the sand talking about some you know like and so when I came to that realization and I also have really had to come to the point to realize that not every relationship is from God and not every and this has nothing to do with that particular friend group but not every relationship is from God and not every relationship has your best interest in mind and some people really connect to you for what is inside of you like the gift of God that's inside of you um because it's a light and as long as you're a light you're going to be gravitating people because, you know, boom, 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 boom. And so I really had to learn that. And it, I ain't going to lie, it was very heartbreaking. Like, I was just like, all these people don't like me for real. And and not in the sense of like, oh my gosh, everybody's walking around not liking you. I had to really realize that for real, I was in the deep. They were in the sand. And I couldn't, there was no meeting ground. That They were not willing to go to the deep to meet me where I was and I wasn't willing to come to the sand to meet them where they were so there was a distinction between both but I had to realize that sometimes you don't have to go to the sand and sometimes they don't have to go out to the deep you just realize that that, that that's why the distance is there it's, that's my god like <laughs> that's why the dis good I love the holy ghost wow okay period that's why the distance is there um, that was, oh, that just did, that just, that just did something to my soul. I feel like that's the chat, really. That's why the distance is there. 
because you you in a deep and they understand like some people just don't want to meet you where you are it, and then in other times you you ain't even where they where they at and so that's why the distance is there you have to understand deep calls unto deep and so if I oh mighty God if I'm sitting up here like you don't go fishing in the sand oh let me put my back. you don't go fishing in the sand. So if I'm having the expectation that, oh, this is, I'm willing to say to I'm in the wrong direction. And again, I like, I feel like, no, nah, I'm not about to explain that because it really is what it is. I have an expectation for the people I want to grow with me. I'm going deeper. And so it's not even a matter of they ain't on my level. They can't do it. Like, that's not that. I desire for my relationships. I want to, to pull the people in to go up with me. I don't want... To just be like, y'all, come up, like constantly be yelling to the shore, constantly be yelling to the shore. And if it's certain friends and situations, I'm sure there's people who's like, I want you to come out to the deep. And you keep trying to look back at the shore when I'm trying to get you to come out into the deepest depths of the oceans where I know it's whales and and whatever else out there, mystery fish. Um, and when you're focusing your gaze, either way you're trying, you're, you're, the distance is, is far. Oh my God, I, I just love the I do the distance is too far so either it's one way like I can see I see this in my head now it's like the Lord is just like come here come here come here I'm trying to pull you this way but then my like so imagine the blinds is the Lord right the Lord is like come on I'm trying to pull you deeper and then you up your life but I got my people at the shore like come on let's go over here to like y'all need to come up out here because if oh good God almighty if the Y'all, this is this how you know you get excited. When I hit this finger right here, if because your, your journey is about you, right? Yes, there are going to be people who follow along and you are meant to impact these people, so on and so forth. But if God is calling you this way, you can't keep facing this way. I'm telling you, this chat is for me because healing has been hard. Mighty God. So if the Lord is calling me this way, I'm still trying to face this way and tell y'all to come out here. I, my attention is in the wrong direction because if I'm yelling, how can I hear? <laughs> If I'm yelling to the shore, how can I hear the voice, that still small voice that is saying, ah, ah, come here, come, come on, come on, come on, come on. Who, who, who was it? Uh, was it Peter? Somebody, Peter, one of them who walked on the water. Um, he got frightened, but again, his gaze started to go in the wrong place. He took his eyes off of God. Who took his eyes off of God and then, well, Jesus and Jesus is like, why you do that? I was telling you to come on and you, you was, you had the faith in the beginning. Why is it that we get stuck and decide to shift our gaze? Oh, I love the Lord so good. And so I think with healing, healing becomes hard when we shift our gaze. And I think, shift our focus, let me put that, I feel like gaze sounded a little crazy. Um, we shift our focus from, okay, I'm going, I'm climbing up the mountain where my Savior lives, like I'm going up that way. But then when things get hard, it is so easy. It's like the children of Israel, like it's so easy to turn back. I wish we could just go back, Lord. I Take me back there because it didn't have all of this. Like I, I knew where my next meal was coming from. I knew where my homegirls were. I knew where, you know, the next steps were. Like, God, you are calling me to something that is not familiar. And when this stuff gets a little rough, when you take me to a deeper level, okay, I've conquered that. Okay, I've, 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 I know how to heal. You know, when people people say something stupid, I know how to do that. I know how to navigate that territory. But when you show me the people that I have deep connection with is out on the shore and you're trying to call me up into the to the, to the the yachts, that's over. Not the yachts. Uh, you're trying to call me out here to the to the whales and the swordfish and all this other stuff. And I, I, still, want to, I still want tilapia. I still want catfish. Like, <laughs> I still want to fish for those things that are in shallow water like give me give me the shallow water but i believe the lord is just really telling me even in this moment and as i'm navigating this healing process is that to trust him even when you just i mean that's simple like that's simple science and calligraphy trust me when you don't don't understand trust me when you feel like it's too scary and so i feel like i hit a level of my comfort zone where i was like this feels safe i know these these people, I know this situation. I even know this level that you have me on, Lord. But you're calling me to something different. So hurt not hidden. I'm full circling back to conference because I feel like this is now bringing clarity to, to conference thing. Hurt not hidden, preserved. Like I even think of all the preservation methods that, that Jesus had. Like 
and, and the many miracles that he performed, like as he provided overflow for when he had zero to work with, like <laughs> they had zero to work with the five loaves and two fish. Like those are the many things that God had. Those are the preservation markers to say, I can still give you more when it looks like you have less. Like, my God, I just I love it here. I do. And so how do we full circle this? How do we make it make sense to your life? I told you this was going to be a long chat, but I believe truly that what you deem as oh this is this is not enough or this is too much like you still have to focus on the lord where is your focus and i think the more that we realize our focus is off everything will seem so dramatic i i was looking at matthew 11 i'm and then we're gonna in the chat here I was looking at Matthew 11 before I started because it was like two scriptures that really ring in my spirit when I think about the particular season that I'm going in and just my assignment in the earth. And it was Matthew 11, 28 through 30. And it says, come to me, all you who are who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. You will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And y'all know I'm coming, I'm coming back with facts. So I looked this up in different translations and it were different versions of the Bible. And it says, the Amplified says it like this. It says, come to me all who are weary and heavily burdened um, by religious rituals that provide no peace. And I will give you rest, refreshing your souls with salvation. And then... Um, the contemporary English version says, if you are tired from carrying heavy burdens, come to me and I will give you rest. It keeps going in different ways and factors of how to say it. But I think when we carry our own load and when we really try to take matters in our own hand, when our focus is off, that we become burdened, we become weary, we become tired. And God just, he gives us the secret sauce. He tells us, come to me, lay it at my feet. For my yoke is easy as, and my burden is light. Like if I exchange the burden, my burdens and give them to God, he don't have no burdens. <laughs> he, don't, he don't have no burdens. So it's just like, I'm really learning that. And then I went to Psalm 34 and um, I, verse, mm, verse 18. And it says, the Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and save such as have a contrite heart in a contrite or well, contrite spirit um and contrite means remorseful or um it means remorse, remorseful of your sins and so you know we can often be tied like i can say for me personally i know this is a long video i'm gonna just upload it to youtube and y'all gonna be all right um but i know sometimes we can get so caught up in the rhythm of the things like for me I know that Talks with Tina is exactly where God has me. This is what he's given me to do in the earth. And he's given me other tasks, like I host conferences. I do the podcast. I do, you know, many other things. But it's just like, God, <laughs> this this right here has become too much. And you do it out of religious practice. Like, if I don't do this, then um, I'm not fulfilling my purpose in the earth. And so when I took the long sabbatical, um, I was just like, I, I knew that God was healing me in ways that, that I'd never really spoke of or just like I knew I needed to deal with. And so coming back, I knew that there were still things that, you know, I'm working through, but the whole point is to be transparent and honest and authentic. This is me authentically. And so that's the chat. My brother's about to come stumbling down the stairs, but I think that's the chat. So like lay it at his feet, have a jolly good time. And I hope y'all heal well. And that's the chat. Love y'all. Bye.